Another significant participant in the programmatic advertising ecosystem is the ad fraud detection and protection platform. Such platforms use machine learning and advanced bot fingerprinting technologies to identify ad fraud taking place in the online advertising world. An ad fraud protection platform can also block the buying process when fraudulent impressions are detected. Therefore, programmatic advertisers could save a lot of marketing money from not bidding for such impressions. But before getting down to how such platforms can dramatically improve programmatic advertising performance, I think it's best to give you an overview of what ad fraud is, why it exists, how big it is, and how it takes place. Once those are covered, I will explain how ad fraud is detected and prevented, which are the most popular providers, and how to deploy such a solution. So what is ad fraud? Advertising fraud is the practice of fraudulently representing online advertising impressions, clicks, and conversions to fool advertisers for financial gain. Fraudsters use sophisticated technology such as networks of bots, and several other methods to generate fake impressions, which are not seen by humans or target audiences. When that happens, advertisers end up paying for something totally worthless to them. Remember that in the programmatic advertising ecosystem, advertisers typically pay for delivered impressions. So when those impressions are seen by bots instead of humans, advertisers end up wasting a lot of marketing money for absolutely no gain. The phenomenon of ad fraud existed from the beginning of online advertising, but with the increasing adoption of programmatic media buying, advertising fraud has gained traction. Since there has been a constant shift of ad spend towards programmatic advertising, this created the ideal environment for fraudsters to join the party and make enormous amounts of illegitimate profits. Let's not forget that online advertising is a growing, multi-billion dollar market. It is estimated that the global digital ad expenditure is $225 billion. The enormous size of this market tempts criminals into creating technology and techniques to steal money from advertisers. But how big is ad fraud? According to some programmatic solution vendors, ad fraudsters steal almost half of every dollar spent on online advertising. Unfortunately, nobody can calculate the exact cost of ad fraud. That's because fraudsters use sophisticated technologies, so that ad fraud protection platforms could not detect them. Indeed, some ad fraud types are very hard to detect, and therefore, even if you use an ad fraud detection and protection tool, some ads might still be served to bots. Ad fraud is the number one cybercrime in terms of revenue, and the second most profitable organized crime globally after drug trafficking. It can happen in well-known publisher sites such as the New York Times or BBC, and in any ad format such as banner, video, and native ads. Another interesting fact is that about 50% of the internet users are bots, which generate about 60% of all internet traffic. That's really surprising, isn't it? There are several types of ad fraud in the online world, but in this lesson, I will cover the 16 most popular ones. A really popular ad fraud technique is the use of botnet traffic. Bots are small malware programs installed on consumers' computers. They can perform various internet activities, such as viewing ads, clicking on links, and visiting websites. Groups of bots hosted on many computers are called botnets. Publishers can use botnet traffic on their websites to sell their ad spaces and generate high revenues. This video will show you how computers get infected with bots, and how those generate fake impressions. The team at Forensic isolated a particularly malicious bot, infected a virtual computer, and here's what we discovered. Typically, this kind of malware is launched on your computer by clicking on a link, downloading a file, or visiting an unsafe, compromised website. In some cases, a user doesn't have to do anything at all, as botnets comb through the internet, looking for outdated browsers and security vulnerabilities. What you are seeing on the right is a program that shows an in-depth view of your computer's activity. On the left, we have revealed the windows hidden from the user that have been generated by the malicious bot. Once launched, the bot begins connecting with lots of websites, opening windows, and viewing ads. These ad views are fraudulent because no human ever sees them. No company is immune from these fraudulent tactics. For example, here are ads for Procter & Gamble, Verizon, and General Motors. Advertisers pay for the total number of ad views. All these views are fake and thus worthless. These ads are invisible and are never seen by real consumers. Every five minutes, the malware refreshes and begins again simulating a new user, viewing more ads, and committing more ad fraud. Here the botnet visits pages containing hundreds of ads, 
This is a common tactic fraudulent publishers use to inflate impression counts per visit. This page is only visible to the botnet. Advertisers and ad exchanges have no way of seeing this activity due to the limitations posed by cross-domain iframes. The bot is relentlessly working as long as the machine is on. This bot is not alone. It's part of a massive bot net with thousands or even hundreds of thousands of machines working to commit ad fraud on a global scale. Over 24 hours, the machine has generated 10,000 false impressions. If it's part of a 100,000 machine botnet, that means 1 billion fraudulent impressions a day. That's billions of dollars in wasted advertising spend a year. Having the right ad fraud protection in place can make all the difference. Remarketing fraud is the practice of using botnets that visit many websites, especially those of large commercial companies, to enter their remarketing pools. Next, those bots visit certain publisher websites so that advertisers would bid for those impressions. Therefore, dishonest publishers can generate high CPMs and make a great deal of ad revenue. Commonly, many publishers buy traffic to boost page views. It is usually sold by companies promising legitimate web traffic. If you are an online advertiser or digital marketer, the chances are that someone has already approached you to sell vast amounts of traffic at a really low cost. It goes without saying that almost all of that traffic is generated by bots or botnets. Pixel stuffing occurs when a one by one pixel containing an advert is placed on a publisher's webpage. Even though that ad space is invisible to the human eye, it can contain an entire advert and therefore, it can generate a fake ad impression. Since that impression is considered valid, the advertiser has to pay for it. This method is used by dishonest publishers who actually generate more impressions from invisible ads to increase their revenues. Ad stacking occurs when multiple ads are stacked on top of one another, with only the top ad being visible to the viewer. Even though the rest of the ads are invisible to humans, their impressions are still considered valid. Advertisers have to pay for such impressions. Again, this method is used by dishonest publishers to increase their ad revenues. The mobile SDK overlap technique is quite popular in the mobile space. In a given mobile app, there might be adverts running from different ad exchanges and networks simultaneously, and all in the background. It works like ad stacking I described earlier, where many adverts load but only one is visible to the human eye. Now, let's see how this works. Forensic has detected high levels of non-human ad traffic on thousands of mobile apps. To investigate, we selected a variety of these suspicious apps and downloaded them from a trusted app store. We installed the apps on various mobile platforms, monitored their traffic, and here's what we found. What appear to be legitimate mobile apps were, in fact, committing ad fraud. These apps begin on startup without being opened and continue to run in the background serving ads impossible to see and simulating real user activity. Over 700 maliciously hidden ads served per hour, defrauding advertisers every second. Even when minimized, the app continues to serve ads that will never be seen. What's more, just a single app consumed two gigabytes of data per day. This quickly drains a user's battery, all while eating away at their data plan. These apps are defrauding companies like Microsoft, Unilever, Amazon, Coca-Cola, and Mercedes-Benz. In just 10 days, Forensic identified over 12 million affected devices globally. This means trillions of fraudulent ad impressions every year. According to eMarketer, the global advertising spend on mobile will be over $100 billion in 2016. Of that, how much will be lost through mobile ad fraud? Having the right ad fraud protection in place can make all the difference. Viewport is the user's visible area of a web page. Dishonest publishers can create and place ad spaces outside the viewport area. In this case, whenever a page loads, many adverts could load outside the viewport area without being visible to humans. Since those ad impressions are considered valid, advertisers have to pay for them. Pop-unders are windows that appear behind the main web browser window. Think of them as the opposite of pop-up windows that most of us have seen on the web. Adverts that load in pop-unders instead of the main web browser window are not seen by humans. Even though most ad networks do not allow this, it is a quite common ad fraud technique. 
Advertisers who run video campaigns typically pay for video plays. Many publisher websites feature autoplay videos in mute mode, which does not require a viewer to click on the video for it to play. It goes without saying that advertisers get charged immediately, whether users have actually watched the video ads or not. Impression laundering is the practice of concealing the real website where the actual ads are displayed. Domain spoofers mask themselves as large legitimate and trustworthy publishers to monetize ad impressions that advertisers otherwise wouldn't buy. In the programmatic advertising ecosystem, publishers are allowed to label their own websites. Fraudsters may identify themselves as BBC.com or any other large publisher, and hence advertisers can be tricked into bidding for such ad placements. Bundle ID spoofing is a similar practice to impression laundering, but it takes place on mobile apps. It basically tricks advertisers into believing that ads are being shown in a certain app, while in fact they are shown on other apps. Mobile device ID reset ad fraud is a common practice to defraud advertisers paying for app installs. The way it works is that bots click on app install ads, download the corresponding apps, then reset the mobile device ID, uninstall the apps, and begin the process again. This technique fools advertisers into believing that the app was installed on many devices by many users. According to Apps Flyer, device ID reset fraud accounted for 26% of mobile install fraud in 2018, amounting to losses of up to 1 billion US dollars. Ghost sites are real websites with real content, usually copied from other large legitimate websites. Because of that, those sites might be declared and considered as quality websites. Those publishers create ad spaces and make them available through ad networks or exchanges. Next, they hire botnets to constantly visit their web pages with the ultimate goal to generate thousands or millions of ad impressions. It goes without saying that advertisers purchase all those impressions, and therefore, ghost site owners can make a great deal of revenue. Ad injection occurs when a piece of software such as malware, adware, or browser add on inserts ads in web pages without getting the site owner's permission. Ad injection can happen in three ways, by adding an advert on the top of the original ad, by replacing the original ad, or by showing them in places that weren't supposed to be displayed. In short, ad slots get hijacked, and start generating revenue for the fraudster rather than the publisher. Click hijacking occurs when a user clicks on an ad, but the fraudster redirects him to a different website. In this case, the advertiser pays for the impression but loses the prospective client. This ad fraud technique can be achieved in three ways, by infecting the user's computer with malware or adware, compromising the publisher's website, or the user's proxy server. It goes without saying that all the above ad fraud techniques can be combined to generate even more revenue. For example, botnet traffic with remarketing fraud, pixel stuffing, and video autoplays. As you have realized, it would have been extremely difficult for advertisers to combat all those ad fraud types on their own. Remember, fraudsters already use sophisticated technology, which is continuously being improved. On the bright side, there are some ad fraud detection and protection tools, which can identify fraudulent behavior, and prohibit a DSP from bidding on such impressions. If you plan to run programmatic advertising campaigns, I highly advise you to deploy this solution. Otherwise, expect most of your marketing money to be stolen by ad fraudsters. Note that this solution comes at an extra cost that depends on the total number of impressions you would like to deliver per month. In general, it's a few cents per thousand delivered impressions. That extra CPM cost will be small and definitely worthy, as it could save you thousands or millions of dollars. If you are wondering how such a tool can connect with a DSP, there are two methods. The most common one is to wrap your campaign ad creatives with additional code provided by the ad fraud detection and protection tool. That is a manual approach. The other way is by establishing a direct connection between the ad fraud protection tool and your DSP. That way, the additional code is added automatically to all campaign ad creatives. But this will depend on whether your DSP has a partnership with the ad fraud protection tool you would like to use. Another thing to note is that ad fraud protection vendors usually ask advertisers to add a tracking code snippet on the advertised websites to track user behavior and unusual traffic patterns. That way, advertisers could see reports on good and bad traffic they get through a standalone platform offered by the ad fraud protection vendor. The most popular ad fraud detection and protection providers are Anura, Double Verify, 
Integral Ad Science, White Ops, Fraud Logics, Pixelate and Confiant.